Hey YouTubers, I'm sure by now you've heard of these rocket mass heaters and rocket stoves and you've probably heard about how efficient they are and like one guy he was supposed to like he had a wood stove and it burned four cords of wood in a winter and yet then he uh, used a rocket made a rocket stove and burned like a cord right um, the idea I mean the idea behind them is to uh, keep the fuel exposed to uh, to oxygen and high heat at the same time and um, for a longer period of time uh, basically there's a there's problems with like campfires uh, I, I'm not sure if you're like up for an explanation of how these rocket stoves work but you're gonna get one if you want it so um, here we are let's call this a campfire it's a very poor drawing of one but um, one of the problems with this is um, most people know that wood or whatever you're burning generally that isn't what is actually burning uh, what's happening is wood is being heated up to a high temperature and when that happens it's uh, it emits a bunch of different gases let's see here they emit 40 percent hydrogen about 40 percent carbon monoxide which burns and then you got about three percent methane seventeen percent uh, carbon dioxide that's the gas that burns but then of course you also have embers and uh, uh, carbon particulates that come up and uh, and they also burn if you uh, if you can get the gas hot enough right well anyway the problem with fires right is the air comes into the fire and I mean up into basically the flames right and then they burn those gases uh, the flames have like radiant heat and they heat up the wood and then the gases they burn at that point but then when you have fire you know when you have a lot of heat there's a problem with that the heat expands the air dramatically um, that's what makes a car run it pushes the pistons down but anyway the the air becomes it pushes out and it becomes much larger and it uh, as a and it weighs the same amount so the result is it rises right so then you have a lot of um, a lot of heat in the flames and the air rises and then it then it rises up out of the flames and so you get a lot of air coming in and and you only really have one hot spot it may be a couple of feet or so and then basically the fuel that's unburned and particulate matter and carbon monoxide and many different gases they are they're just wafted way up into the air and they collect as soot on things and uh, basically it's just unless you have like a really nice hot fire with really dry wood uh, that's like going good um, you're gonna get a good deal of smoke and uh, and you'll get uh, particulate matter and stuff like that and then of course for the same a given amount of heat you'll uh, you'll have to use a lot of wood right well anyway oh and then of course the flame the bottom of the the uh, the flames they're like ashes uh, or the bottom of the fire is full of ashes but um, those ashes in some circumstances could be burned but you'd have to like blow on them or something you know how when you blow on hot coals they glow brighter and then they emit a lot more heat well anyway uh, those are sort of trapped down by the cold earth and then you just get a lot of ashes and all that so a campfire isn't super efficient unless you happen to have a lot of really dry wood around well anyway some bright boy I think he might have been Benjamin Franklin but he might not have been the originator of the uh, design came up with the idea of confining the fire in uh, a cast iron box and then uh, come limiting the speed at which the air could enter the fire right and then 
and then basically packing it full of wood and then cranking the damper down on the on the exit and the inlet and then uh, the fire burns more slowly but the problem is when that happens the temperature tends to drop down to like four or five six hundred degrees and when that happens you can't burn a lot of what the wood produces you can burn the really good stuff like uh, like the hydrogen that certainly burns um, the carbon monoxide it has a higher temperature of burning so it will burn somewhat methane it'll it'll of course burn but then you got wood particulate matter and uh, carbon particles and whatnot and they they need a high temperature to burn and a lot of oxygen and oftentimes these stoves I mean they work great on the inside but they produce a significant amount of smoke and all that smoke could be used to heat the house only the thing is the fire has to be really hot for that to happen and if you if you basically burn the fire uh, a longer time at a cooler temperature I mean it's just not as efficient you need more wood to uh, to heat your house but then uh, not too long ago somebody came up with the idea of a rocket stove what happens is this is one style this is what they call a J tube rocket stove but they also have uh, the straight in type where you just shove the wood into the uh, thing and you have a little platform that holds the wood and then air comes from underneath and then goes through the fuel through the wood and then up the chimney but basically the chimney has a property or a characteristic that is uh, very important for the rocket stoves what it is is uh, it's very very insulated they've got like vermiculite usually or um, basically the the tube is either made of fire brick or steel or something but um, they've generally got a significant amount of insulation around it and that causes the uh, the fire to um, of course you get a lot of heat right and then uh, the heat stays confined in the J-tube for a longer period of time as it rushes up and what happens with this uh, what this is the J-tube style but what they do is they take wood sticks and whatnot and they sort of toss them down in here like so and then air is pulled in into the stove like so and it's pulled down past the fuel and then the fire occurs at the bottom of the uh, of the fuel of course but then it doesn't really go out it continues to burn all those gases and particulate matter and uh, uh, all kinds of those uh, things that were generally turned to ash um, and the draft the air being pulled through even blows on the ashes or the coals of the wood and um, then it hits this J tube and it has this big circular uh, circular pattern of uh, of fire basically and it mixes all of the high per the particulate matter and all the carbon um, pieces and all of the carbon monoxide and mixes it all together at really really high temperatures about 1200 degrees and then that causes it to um, to burn all of those components down and uh, and then it basically turns it, the whole mix into um, what you end up with is basically carbon dioxide and water vapor so it um, and then basically the flames come out the top and then people can stick like a pot or something on the top of it and then uh, it blasts out like a rocket now the properties of gases when they heat up they expand many times and um, you have like maybe a cubic foot being sucked into the J tube here but since it, ex it heats up to like 1200 degrees or so or thousand or whatever but basically when that happens one goes in and ten or 
10 or 10, 12 times of the volume comes blasting out and it ends up looking very much like a rocket. <clears throat> well, anyway, and because it's so hot, even though the chimney is fairly short, it's it's vastly lighter. So, for example, if you have one cubic feet, foot going in there, and then it's 10 foot cubic feet coming out, right? Then that means that those 10 cubic feet are so much lighter than that one, right? That that it basically pull or it it's it's basically shoved in at cold, and then it just it's vastly lighter here, so it really rises up and it draws well, and that's another reason why it kind of looks like a rocket. But anyway, it comes blasting out of the J tube, and then you've used vastly more of the fuel, and you've used it vastly more efficiently. And then basically, after the fire burns down and everything what you're left with is, is a very fine gray ash that's easily swept out of the uh, of the J-tube and then you're ready for your next fire or not you can probably burn many different fires in in one of these things over the months and uh, and then you would uh, you'd be basically be able to you know you, you get much less ash let's put it that way so that is the main advantages of a rocket stove and um, I think I'll probably continue this video on a part two and explain a little bit how these rocket mass heaters that uh, you might be hearing about on YouTube how they work and basically they start with a J-tube style rocket stove like this and then they just put a few additional things onto it so I will go ahead and uh, stop this video here and then go on to the second video.